Okay, so now let's take a look at some equilibrium calculations with acids and bases. The first thing we need to do whenever we're looking at equilibrium calculations for acids and bases is determine whether or not I have a strong acid or a weak acid, strong base or weak base. Because if it is a strong acid or a strong base, there is no equilibrium. It is a left to right reaction. So what this means is that if I take HCl and put it in water to get hydronium and Cl minus, that really what's happening is not that, but th that, with very, very little going back the other way. So I can assume that this goes 100% left to right, so 0.1 molar HCl, 0.1 molar hydronium. So really, when we're looking at equilibrium calculations with acids and bases, we're looking at weak acids and weak bases. So we follow the exact same steps as we followed in the last unit. So, and you can see they're listed right here. Really, the only difference is how the question is asked. So I can still ask, what is K? And remember, if I want to solve what is K, I need equilibrium concentrations. But instead of being told the equilibrium concentration is, you're going to say, you're going to see that it says what, that the pH of the solution is equal to some number. So you can get a pH, and that from that pH you can figure out equilibrium values to determine your K. Another question you can ask is what are the equilibrium concentrations. In this case, you will be asked, what is the pH? The third question, is the system at equilibrium, is not one we consider with acids and bases, because if an acid-base system comes to equilib is an equilibrium system, that is, it's a weak acid or a weak base, then it comes to equilibrium immediately and we don't worry about whether or not it's there because it either is an, equi an equilibrium system or it is not an equilibrium system. It's strong or it's weak. So let's take a look at some calculations. But before we do that, this is a table of K values, Ka and Kb. This is in your book on page 631. There are also tables on page A17 and A18, which are in Appendix A, in case you ever need to look up equilibrium values. Okay, so let's look at this question. <clears throat> I want to calculate the Ka of acetic acid. So first, write an equation. So I take some acetic acid and put it in water and I get acetate and hydronium. That has a K exp expression to go with it. That would be the concentration of acetate times the concentration of hydronium over the concentration of acetic acid. Remember, water will not be included because water is a liquid and liquids are not included in the equilibrium expression. So now I set up an ice table. I put an X to remind me that that doesn't count. I start with one molar acid and nothing over here, which means that I have to lose something over here and gain something over here to get to equilibrium. And then this is where the pH comes in. If I know the pH is equal to 2.38, then I know the equilibrium concentration of hydronium ion in solution, because that's what pH tells me. So the equilibrium concentration of hydronium ion in solution is equal to 10 to the negative pH. So that is equal to 4.2 times 10 to the negative third molar. So that's my equilibrium concentration of hydronium. So that goes here. Which means that that must be how much this went up by. And since it's everything's one-to-one -one stoichiometry, that also means that's how much this went up by.
which also means that's how much this went down by on the reactant side. Now, you'll notice when I do this math and round to the correct number of significant figures, that's what I get. So, <clears throat> this is pretty much how all our equilibrium calculations are going to work. We obviously have to get some products in order to get equilibrium, but we really don't affect the concentration of reactants to a great extent. So, plugging these numbers in to my Ka expression. This is just squared because it's at that times that, and then I divide by 1. So that comes out to 1.7 times 10 to the negative fifth. In the book, it says 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth, so that's pretty good agreement. So let's look at another problem. That's calculating K. Now we're going to look at calculating pH. So remember, this is what is the equilibrium concentration of hydronium ions in solution. I still have to write an equation. And this is going to give me hypochlorite ion and hydronium. I still have a K expression. And I'm going to do an ice table for this. That goes away. So <clears throat> initially, I have 0.2 molar of that, none of that, none of that. This has to go up to get to equilibrium. This has to go down. Now I don't know how much it goes up or down by, so I'm going to call that value x. And since it's 1 to 1 mole ratios, everything is just plus x or minus x. So now, when I go to do my calculation, you'll notice that I have 0.2 minus x. So in our first round, we're going to assume that the minus x is going to be so small, it's not going to affect the value of 0.2 to any great extent. So plugging numbers in, there's my Ka value. On the top, I have x squared. On the bottom, I have 0.2. Solving for x, I get 7.6 times 10 to the negative fifth. 10 to the negative fifth, 10 to the negative first, that's not going to affect it. Now the next question is, what does that equal? Well, that equals the concentration of hydronium, which also equals the concentration of hypochlorite ion. But the question is, what is the pH? So I'm not quite done, because pH is the negative log of 7.6 times 10 to the negative fifth. So the pH of this is at 4.12. So that is the answer. Again, remember, just because you solve for x does not mean you've answered the question. Now let's look at a KB problem. <clears throat> if we look at KB, we do the same process. I want to know what is the pH of a 0.5 molar ammonia solution. So I take ammonia and put it in water and I get ammonium, which would be the conjugate acid of ammonia, and I get hydroxide. So I know I'm dealing with Kb. Kbs go with hydroxide ion. So the Kb expression looks like this. I ignore water because it's not part of the equilibrium. Ignore water. So, 0.5 molar ammonia, nothing to start. To get to equilibrium, I have to lose ammonia, gain ammonium, gain hydroxide. 
I'm going to call that amount x. It's all one to one, so it's all x. So that would be 0 0.500 minus x. That would be x. That would be x. So now let's start plugging things in. 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth equals x squared over 0.5. x is equal to 3.0 times 10 to the negative third, which is equal to the concentration of hydroxide and the concentration of ammonium. So that is not a pH. Now I have a hydroxide ion concentration. I need a pH, which deals with hydronium ion concentration. So the, think the easiest way to do this is first to calculate the pOH. So the pOH of this solution would be the negative log of 3 times 10 to the negative third, which equals 2.52. So that's pOH. Then pH is equal to 14 minus 2.52, which equals 11.48. So those are your basic Ka and Kb calculations. We're going to be expanding on those later on in the unit, but for now, you need to get these under your belt.